Welcome back, folks, to the Mail Right Show. It's episode 251. We've got a great guest. We've got Shard Bassi. Um, he's from Listing on Demand Method, and also he has his own great podcast. I actually listened to a couple of his shows, and I thought he did a great job. And also, I've got my great co-host, Robert Newman, and we're going to be talking about not precisely getting leads, but after you've got them, how do you follow through and some insights that Shard is hopefully going to give us. So, Shard, do you want to introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers? Yeah, first of all, uh, Jonathan, Robert, thank you very much for having me on, on, on your podcast. Uh, I'm excited to be here. And uh, a little bit about me. I've been uh, in the industry directly and indirectly for, I'd say, about 23 years now. And uh, sold real estate in two different marketplaces, did very well in, in both marketplaces. Uh, first marketplace, uh, the biggest hiccup we had over there is I wanted to make a lot of money and the commission checks were very small. So I made the move from Detroit to Newport Beach, California back in 1999. And at that time, I went to work for a gentleman by the name of Mike Ferry. I think everybody knows who Mike Ferry is. I never graduated from college and I figured he's the best uh, college that I could possibly go to. Well, where I could learn how to excel and grow and do all the things I want to do. Um, <clears throat> and then in 2004, uh, I went to work with uh, Tom Ferry. So, <laughs> I, so I served with the Ferries for approximately 11 years. Uh, during my time over there, uh, I had the most in-demand one-on-one coaching schedule. Never had less than 140 one-on-one coaching clients at any given time. Uh, since then, altogether, I've been on uh, over 30,000 one-on-one coaching sessions working with agents from all over the country. So that's pretty, uh, that, that's like the quick version of my last 20 years. That's like my 22nd, 20-year history. Did you say 30,000? Over 30,000 one-on-one coaching calls. Wow. Wow. I've always said I am the most experienced online marketing consultant. You might actually beat me, brother. I've been doing it for 13 years, taking three to four calls a day the entire time. I don't think that I can say that that equals 30,000. Yeah, so, you know, Robert, for, for, for a good period of time, I was getting on the phones at approximately 5 a.m. and doing like half hour sessions, like, you know, five sessions, half hour break, five sessions, half hour break, like from 5 a.m. to about 4 or 5 p.m. Jesus. Okay. Wow. That's impressive. Well, well, so it's great to have you on the show. Um, do you also want to have a, you know, you've got your podcast, but we can discuss that later on during the show. Um, so, you know, we're, to say we're living through interesting times would be an understatement. So I don't know what kind of feedback you're getting from your coaching clients and that, but um, before we go into the main topic, um, you got anything you would like to say about what our agents should be doing now, mindset, and also any kind of practical things that they should be doing to try and get them through this, this difficult moment? Well, I think uh, the, the first thing that we got to do is, is we got to take personal responsibility. You know, there's, there's what's going on on the outside, and then there's what's going on on, on the inside. Look, I can't control what my government is going to do. I, I can't control who's going to get sick. I, I can't control what everybody wants to do. But I can control how I think and how I feel. And if I control how I think and how I feel, then I can control what I do. And what I do will give me the results that I want. So, you know, when this whole pandemic, coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, all that good stuff came about, I've seen two types of people. I've seen the people that are freaking out. And I've seen the people that said, hey, it's opportunity time. So it, it became my job to immediately just shift the mindset of every single person from like, don't freak out. Let's just do the best that we can do and keep the, keep the focus on helping as many people as we possibly can. And that's exactly what we did. And, and Jonathan, you know, I have, I have people that, <clears throat> I have one person that I can think of uh, in particular right now who had a goal to reach, to do $100,000 the whole entire year, single mom of two, okay? And when this whole thing, you know, freaked out, she was at $10,000 for the year. And I got to tell you, she's already exceeded the goal. Like in the last 90, 120 days during the pandemic, she made more money than she wanted to make all year long. And how she did it was, all she said is like, there's no one that's going to take care of my kids. I got to take care of my kids. Here's all the things I cannot do. Here's all the things that I can do. And she just focused on the things that she can do. But the most, the two most important things she focused on all day, every single day was not the business. What she focused on 
how she was feeling because I kept on drooling in her head that the key to success has nothing to do with what you are going to do. The key to success has everything to do with how you are feeling while you are doing it. And when you're feeling good and, and, and you're in the right state of mind, then you got the right focus, you got the right energy and you take action in spite of you. So the, the other people who did not take that advice, uh, you know, did they school? Absolutely. But that was personal responsibility. So I just throw it right back at every single person. It's just say, hey, take responsibility for where you're at and do the things that you need to do. And you won't have to worry about anything. Easier said than done. I get it. Yeah, over to you, Robert. Um, can, does anybody mind if I, if I kind of go in a slightly different direction? I, I okay. have. Okay. Chatty, I, I've been waiting 13 years to run across a guy like you um, because uh, the fairies are two people that, so, so what I do is I, I, I make real estate websites and SEO, but, but a lot of my approach, like what drives my business is a huge website, 80, 90 videos. I have, I have a lot of views that hundreds, if not thousands of hours per month. So what I'm talking about though, is I'm trying to demystify like the technology equation when it comes to uh, real estate agents. But a lot of my clients, as you can well imagine, are also clients of Ferry and Mike. And they've also reviewed like uh, Mike Ferry has all these scripts that he puts online and shit like that. I'm sorry for the big buildup and the big intro, but here's the question that I oftentimes get from people because they're always very confused when they're sitting here and, and they're going to a coaching service. They're very confused by what they do and don't get because nine times out of 10, when people call me and they, they're coached by Tom, they're like, Hey, he's great, but I've gotten zero trends, like no granular detail on anything related to tech. Yes. I get broad suggestions like go do this, focus on video, blah, 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 start a podcast. But it, but that's where it ends. So your opinion, Chad, Chatty. So, so how do I say your first name, first of all? Chatty. Chatty? Chatty. Chatty? Yeah. Okay. So in your opinion, Chatty, uh, and, and if, I'm being, if I'm asking you to, like, where do those coaching services start and stop? Like, what can you actually expect to learn? Actually, you know what? Why not? Let's make this personal. What can you learn from those guys? What can you learn from you? I heard you talking about this at the beginning of the show. What's the difference? And where does that level of coaching stop? Like what, how granular will you actually get with somebody if they start tossing you real specific questions? Like I get mindset. That's what Tom talks about all the time. But like, okay, I've got the mindset. I want to hammer out calls. Can you help me? Yes or no? Yes. And, you know, I'm going to give you like four or five answers to, you know, that one big fully loaded question. Sure. First of all, I just... I just want to say that uh, I think Tom and Mike are two amazing people. And if we really want to face reality, I think the majority of the coaches in the industry are a byproduct of Mike Ferry, who is the godfather of coaching. Okay. Right. So having been in, in their presence for as long as I have been in their presence is is the reason that I am here today. So had it not been for them, I most likely would not be who I am today. And I'm forever grateful to the family, to, to the fairy family. Okay, now, where does coaching start and where does coaching stop? <clears throat> okay, so I think that it doesn't matter who your coach is, more important is gonna be, is the student. Is the student ready to take on the coaching? See, I get a lot of people, and I'm very selective who I work with. I get people that, like, want to come into my program. And you can buy my programs online, by the way. You can search all you want. You can't join any of my programs online unless you have a conversation either with myself or my team member. And if we're not a fit, we don't let you in, okay? So we're always looking for, you know, the people that don't want to spend too much time having the mindset conversation. I, I'm sick and tired of having the mindset conversation. Look, it's black and white. It's either you're committed or you're not. If you need help you know, reaching that level of commitment, we'll work with you on that. But if I want to sit there and babysit your mind forever, I don't want to work with you. Okay. We give you the tools. It's very simple. It's a daily agenda that you follow through every single day and, and you're good. Now I get that there's a lot of coaches out there that tell you, yeah, Hey, you need to build a funnel. Yeah. You need to start a podcast. You need to, 
you, you know, you know, pay for this online service and, you know, many chat and all that good stuff to generate leads. And the coach can't coach you on that aspect of it. Okay. Like me personally, I can't, I can draw out the funnel for you. I'm not going to build the funnel for you. Okay. So, <clears throat> You know, the coach is giving you direction to go in, 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 the right, um, in, in the right path. And you got to, you know, we give you resources. Like, hey, go to, you know, Robert. He'll, he'll build your funnel for you. He'll do this for you, et cetera. So th that's, I, I think that's across the industry. It's, it's the same, whether it's Ferry or someone else. We push you in the right direction. Uh, but I think where, where people are pushing people in the wrong direction is when it comes to the most important element on how to succeed in this business, and that is the art of communication and how you take the leads that you generate and you turn them into actual appointments and actual contracts. Okay. And that's what, that's what your personal strongest, like, like, like we all have core shit that we do. I, forgive me, everybody, but I, I curse like a sailor. You've been listening to the show. You already know that. So we have core things that we do. I, I do a lot of stuff, conversion, and I build a beautiful website, blah, blah, blah. But, but my real passion and skill is SEO, like inbound marketing SEO. I'm taking it that your real passion and skill is what do we do inside the conversation after we get the lead? Is that right or wrong? 100%, yeah. my friend, 100%. So like, okay. you know, for example, you and I would make a perfect team. I send somebody to you, you get them all the leads. I show them how to convert them. I can't gotcha. do what you do. You, I don't know if you can do what I can do, but together we, we make a perfect team. And, um, you know, lead generation nowadays, uh, you know, with the likes of whether it's Zillow or Bold Leads or, you know, any of those online services, you know, you pay a pretty penny, you get a lead. And most people just don't know what to do with the leads. And that's where a lot of people are failing. I got you. I got you. And, and you're right. I don't know the answer to that, though. I, I can tell you that I've spent a year or two building something for somebody and then get into the place where I know they're getting the product that I promised them, which is names and numbers of interesting people. And they oftentimes are taking it over the finish line. And, and that is enormously frustrating as a marketer, not where you are at. So you're right saying to somebody like, I am a guy that can help you take, like if you have a hundred names of people that probably are interested and I can help you take it over the finish line to get those people from maybe interested to, okay, I know they're interested or not. Yeah, that sounds great. And that's what you focus on. That's what you and your team focus on. And is the coaching done by you or is it done by other people these days? I got a couple of people on my team. I'd say, I'd say it's about 80% me, 20% team members. So I'm the one that shows up uh, more often than not. And, and the reason being is having been involved in, in you know, two, <clears throat> two of the largest coaching companies in the world, um, what happens is, when the message is coming from the top and it goes to the next person, then the next person and the next person, it's not the same message anymore. It's not the same exact training anymore. It, it gets diluted. So I like to keep, you know, the majority of control uh, in regards to my training and my message because I want my clients uh, to get the results. And my focus is, is a little bit different, uh, Robert. I don't want to be the largest coaching company in the world. I want to be the best coaching company for my clients only. Gotcha. Um, John, I, I mean, I, I could keep going, John, but if you have something you want to add, I suggest you get in here and do it because this is right in my bailiwick. So I could just, I could talk to Chatty all day long. I'm, ju I'm just looking at the clock for you. I think we go for our break. We're a minute early, but we go for our break. We're coming back. I think we've had a, a fascinating discussion already. We'll be back in a few moments, folks. We're coming back. We've been talking about mindsets, about actually getting the leads but not doing anything when they are there. Why so many agents are like that. It's been an interesting discussion already. So, you know, everything you've you've said in the first half, I agree with um, Charlie. You know, um, because the mail rights system, you know, we do get leads. We got a, at the present moment. We've got a small group of agents that are using the product, but they're getting results. But of that small group, even a smaller subset, because we 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 can see all the reports. We can see, you know, we can tell, you know, by when we have a weekly chat with them, 
the ones that are following few and the ones that aren't. Why is this such a problem in the industry of, of consistent follow through? I think, uh, I think everybody's looking for the magic pill. Everybody's looking for that one quick hack. And a lot of people are trying to move away from, you know, the reality of like nothing's going to take the place of your work ethic and you showing up and doing, doing the work. Um, I, I, th I think that's, that's part of it. And, you know, I did, you know, just a few days ago, I, I did another podcast episode. And in that po podcast episode, I think, you know, it hovers around the answer to your question. And I said, you know, a lot of people don't follow through for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it's the neuro association. Okay. That, that one activity or that one thing that they signed up for, that one thing that they committed to, what meaning are they given that in their mind? Like, you know, for example, if we say, you know, prospecting, you know, when somebody thinks about prospecting, they think about, you know, could be fear of rejection. It could be of like, you know, pain. It could be uh, hard to do. It could be, will not work for me. It could be not worth it. So that's the neuro association. Now for someone else, you know, prospecting could equate like, uh, this is like an ATM machine for me. Uh, this equals, uh, you know, more listings. This equals more whatever. So it begins with what is the meaning that you're given the activities that you need to make? And here's the thing, nine out of 10 times, the meaning that you're given it is not valid. It's not valid. It's the first thought that pops into your mind. And this is where I tell people, you got to sit down and you got to write down, like, for example, mail right equals what? What, what, what does that equal? I would want them to come up with, I would want them to invent an answer that's going to get them excited equals uh, more leads. Uh, equals more opportunity, uh, equals uh, less stress, uh, equals more consistency. Do, do you see where I'm going? So that's number one, your association. Number two is the lack of desire. A lot of people lack the desire. They lack the desire. And, you know, and like everyone says, hey, I'm committed. Yeah, I know what I want. I was like, if you know what, what you want, then you will do whatever it takes. But you ain't doing whatever it takes, which displays that you lack the desire to, you know, really want what you say you want. So we got to dig deep and we got to connect the why. Why are you doing this? Why did you begin this? Why do you want to make this happen? So we got to create that connection. And the final thing is a lot of people don't follow through because they don't know what to say. They don't know how to say it. They don't know when to say it, which Robert talked about a little bit ago. And he said, hey, there's a bunch of scripts online. I think scripts suck. I think scripts screw more people than, than help people. That's why in, in my listings on demand method, you know, we created something called dream scripts. Dream scripts. Yeah, I give you a script to begin with. You know, because that's going to serve as the foundation that has the framework, okay? And then we get you to memorize it. Like it or don't like it, I get you to memorize it. And then I get you to internalize it. And number three, I help you personalize it to your personality and sales style. And that's what makes it work. Because everyone looks at that script and says, I can't say that. That doesn't sound like me, et cetera. And that's why everybody tried every single script, the moon and the sun, and they're still struggling. Yeah, I, I follow your logic with that 100%. I, I totally agree with what you've just said there. Over to you, Robert. Well, as a, as a I've been selling stuff since I was 17. And Chatty, I, I have to say that your skills and experience and what you're doing right now really appeal to me because, because I'm actually a different, different section of the real estate marketing industry, but exactly the same history. I've worked for all the big names. I've consulted with them. I've worked for some of them directly. And then after a long, long time, I decided to strike out. Now you, you have a lot more years than I do, but I, I worked for other people for nine years and started my own thing five years ago. And one of the things that, that I think that people would be well served to understand is that when you've had a conversation with 30,000 people, if you struck out and started your own thing, the reason that you did it, and you're being very kind to Tom and Mike, so I'll call it out, is that you were seeing something that you felt wasn't being done. And you were plugging that need yourself probably, my guess would be, as a coach. And then finally you just said, why do I keep plugging the hole that, that, that already exists? I'm just gonna go out and start my own thing. Is that roughly correct, Chatty? Uh, pretty much. Yeah. I, I wanted to do, I wanted to do things just a little bit differently. You know, I, you know, I, again, both, uh, both gentlemen, both programs, absolutely excellent programs for the people that fit, you know, that personality style and, you know, that agenda. 
Uh, I wanted to do things a little bit differently. I, I didn't, I, I wanted my coaching to be a little bit more personalized, meaning, you know, I didn't want to like follow a specific, you know, coaching format. And I don't want to sit there, Robert, and talk to you about lead follow-up if you ain't got no leads. You know, I wanted, I wanted to personalize the experience for every single person. And that's what I did. It's like I took that whole big puzzle, you know, that whole big puzzle that had about 40, 50 moving parts. And I said, hey, you know, what are the, you know, three most important parts? And let me just focus on that. And that's exactly what I've done. Everything else, I was like, that's, you know, once I get you to about 100 transactions, that's somebody else. They can go to another coach. They can go to someone else that can take them, you know, where I, where I can't take them. But I wanted to focus on what are the three things that are going to get you to increase your production by two, three transactions every single month, like literally inside of the first 90 to 120 days. Right. Uh, that, that's what I focused on. There's a guy that came on our show by Mike, by the name of Michael Hollenbeck. And I, I really suggest maybe, Chatty, that you check him out because he said something and he had a way of saying it that I'm not going to be able to nail because he, he did it really good. And, uh, but basically, it was, it was this. I'm going to re, re-parcel what you just said. Real estate agents and brokers tend to, to have different phases of their career. Let's just say you're one through five you're building up an income up to maybe a hundred thousand dollars and however many transactions that is in Newport, that might be 10 in someplace else that might be a hundred, right? Depending on what part of the country you're in. So, but you build up that funnel, right? You get it to a point. Now you're making 120 and we all know anybody that's dealt with real estate agents understand that as you're building that up, you're getting busier and busier. Your schedule is getting fuller because you're trying to do every fucking thing yourself. Every damn thing that you're supposed to do, you're doing it solo. And now you want to go to phase two of your career. And Michael said there were six phases. And phase two is where you start hiring on people to replace yourself like an assistant or something like that. And you go from, let's say, 120 to 240 or 300 in terms of income. And then you have tier three, tier four, and tier five. Now, very few people are in tier five. That's the top 0.1%. But what I'm hearing you say is that you're a guy that's probably maybe like tier two through tier four, where you're somewhere between... 120,000 and you want to get up to 500,000, maybe do a million dollars in commission. And maybe you're a guy that you then talk to when you're in that bubble, you're getting coached by you to help you go from that one level of your career into another level. Am I hearing that right? 100%. I got a gentleman I was working with and when he came to me, he was doing three transactions. It was like three transactions. And inside of one year, we took him to over 100 transactions. And when we got to the 100 transactions, uh, that's where, you know, my job, like, pretty much finished. Because it was like, you know, taking on more team members and more management and all that good stuff. And then he went on to someone else, you know, with, of course, my blessing. I was like, you need to go some, somewhere else to get to the two, three, four hundred, uh, you know, transaction mark. Uh, so, yeah, look, I, I tend to focus on, you know, anyone I would say – from, you know, anywhere from a brand new agent all the way to about 100 transactions. And I think my stopping point would be about 100 transactions. Now, mind you, I have another client that does uh, uh, about, um, not working with her right now, but I've worked with someone that does about 350 transactions a year. Wow. Now, that, that person came to me for not how do I get more leads, not how do I convert the leads, Uh, That person came to me of like, hey, can you take what I did and combine it with what you did? And can we help the other agents in my office, you know, take take it to the next level? So, uh, you know, can I work with someone who's doing over 100 transactions? Absolutely. It just depends on what they need help with. Right. And and, and so that everybody, I mean, listen, I, for all the marketing I've done, all the call centers I've run, believe me when I tell you having a specialist that would come in and say, what happens once we've given you a lead? That's a really incredible, valuable skill set, And I'm really excited that you're, that you're super honest and transparent, Chatty, and that you're willing to say, that's my focus. That's what I'm, that's what I'm really my pr- call, primary call to action is. And that's what I can help with. Because I think there is a huge need for that. I love the fact that you're focusing on that as, as maybe not the only thing, but it's certainly something that you're talking about. I think it's important for coaching people to understand what kind of coach are, are you hiring and what is it that their main skill set is and do you need help with that thing? Is if, if you're a mindset person, go sign on to Tom's, you know, monthly calls for $600 a month, do that. But if you're, if you're like, 
if you're not, if you've got the mindset and you're determined, you're just fumbling the words or not, you, hey, call chatty. Um, right. So I, never mind. I, so I, I, have, I have, I have. Go ahead. So I was going to say, I, I have, um, I, I have one person on my team who is um, an uh, NLP hypnotherapist and uh, she's known as the mind trainer. So one of the things that we try to do with every single person is we're not gonna just have a mindset conversation with you. What we focus on is let's reprogram your mind. Let's rewire your mind inside of the first seven days so you hear the message correctly. From there, what we focus on is like, let's build the absolutely best listing presentation that you can possibly have to give you the courage and to give you the confidence to go out there and generate leads. You know, industry standard, uh, industry averages 30% of the listing appointments that people go on. I'm sorry, they convert 30% of the listing appointments they go on on average. My clients are converting 75.2% of listing appointments into listing contracts. And then we focus on lead generation, which I think is easy. And we can, we can pretty much get you to generate anywhere between two to five listing appointments every single week. And it usually takes about 90 days to get you there. Nice. I, I, I love that. Um, John, we're, we're running up on the tail end of the first 30 minutes. I yes. want to hand it back over to you and let you ask one more thing. Um, I, I, the direction I, I'm thinking of going in, we could do, if he wants to do bonus content, we can do bonus content. If he yeah, do you want to stay on, Shelley? Um, we finished the podcast, but we, with some of our guests, we do some bonus content, which... We show the whole interview on the Mail Right YouTube channel and the site. Do you want to stay on for a little longer? Yeah, of course. Let's do this. Right. Um, but just before we wrap up the podcast part of the show is, um, with all your years, is there, you know, you, and if you say that it's too big a question, we should leave it to the bonus, I understand. But is there any one factor that you've noticed uh, with all the people that you've interviewed that you look for that will tell you that person, that individual male or female is probably going to be successful in this industry. Is there, is there like, okay, so basically is there like one characteristic? Yeah. Uh, I, I think, I think the most important thing that I look for in an individual is, is their level of desire. You know, I'm looking for the hungry person. I'm looking for the person that just like, hey, man, just show me what to do and I'm, I'm going to go out there and do it. Uh, I, I think that that's the most important ingredient that I look for. I, I just want to work with someone that really, really, really wants it, just needs direction on how to get it. That's great. So, Shelly, what's the best way for people to learn more about you and your company? Uh, I think the best way is, uh, you know, they can connect with me online, you know, Daddy Bazzi, you know, Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, etc. The podcast is called Top Listing Agent Show. And if someone wanted to get some free training, they can go to listingondemand.com. And that would be a great starting point as well, too. That's great. And Robert, what's the best way for people to learn more about you and your company? Um, actually, as always, it's just go to inboundrem.com and uh, catch up on my blog. Or if you really want to, just go to my services page and uh, you can schedule a call with me. And if you want to find out more about MailRight, all you have to do is go to the MailRight website. We've got all the interviews from the podcast on there. Um, it's a great resource as it is. If you want a personal chat with me, you just my phone number's on the website. You can just give me a ring and then you can get a free half hour consultation from me. And I'll answer to the best of my ability any problems you've got with your online marketing and I'll try and help you out. And also, if you're interested in the MailRite product, we can always arrange a demo and show you the power of MailRite. We'll be back next week with another fantastic guest or an internal discussion between me and my great co-host, Robert. We'll be back next week, folks. Bye. <coughs> so, on to bonus content. Go on, Robert. Um, so, Chatty, I always like to ask this question when I'm talking to coaches. So, uh, I would like to ask what would be some of the questions or some of the first few minutes of conversation that somebody's going to have with you 
So let's just pretend that somebody hears this show and they are an agent making, I don't know, somewhere between sixty and a hundred thousand dollars a year. They've signed up for, let's just say, Ylopo, um, and they're they're now generating a lot of lower quality leads, but they are getting plenty of them. And they've seen on the Ylopo success group that lots and lots of people are closing these leads. They know for sure that people are making it work, but they have not really made it work for, for them. What do you or one of your team members say to that person? Like, what is an introduction to talking to that person look like? Well, the first, the first thing that uh, I, I'd want to identify is, you know, what is their follow-up process? You know, how fast are they getting back to the lead, number one? And when they get back to the lead, uh, I'd want to know uh, specifically, where is that conversation being stopped? Is it being stopped right after the hello? Is it being stopped after they say, hey, you know, I saw that, you know, you inquired about buying a property or selling a property, et cetera. And I'll tell you where a lot of people are, are really failing, okay? So, and, and I'm, I'm able to identify that like totally in, in one or two minutes maximum, Robert. Okay. Where, a lot of people, where, where a lot of people are failing is that they don't know how to create connections. They don't know how to build the instant rapport. And they immediately appear as if they are a telemarketer, not someone who is an expert. So we would have to work on that immediately. And that usually shows up in a matter of like one or two minutes of having a conversation with somebody. And then it revolves around what is the conversation that you're having with those people? I'd want to know, hey, you know, what's, what, what are you saying? What are you asking? They're asking all the wrong questions. Okay. So you're, you're covering, to put it in sales language, you're covering qualifying questions. You're covering tonality, mirroring developing instant rapport, right? Those are the things, some of the things that you're, that you're talking about. And then, and then maybe I will throw a term at you, but you might be calling it something else, but I would usually focus on uptones and downtones too, which is a way of, of getting into mirroring. Okay, so those are all the things that you're talking about. By the way, I was extremely excited. John would probably almost knock his head against the desk, but I'm unbelievably excited that you talked about NLP in, in part of this, uh, this podcast. I think he thinks it's hokum. I'm a huge, 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 huge believer in NLP. Um, I use it in my own life all the fucking time. I've reprogrammed myself more times than I can count, and it works if you if you. Do you think I need reprogramming, Robert? Uh, in some ways, we all do. So that's a that's a loaded. So he's question. been very, Razza, He's been very tactful there, isn't he, Chatty? He's been very tactful. <laughs> I, I'm sure if Chatty has somebody doing NLP, he probably does it every so often himself. It doesn't really matter where you get in life. You always want something else, right? So you do, do you never have to deal with fear and so on? Like you gotta, you gotta figure out a mechanism as, to try to get through that. As we we are free entrepreneurs, all three of us, um, we must live with the ups and downs of entrepreneur, you know, which normally occurs about 15 times every day of, of triumphs and utter despair the following day. Uh, um, so I would imagine we're dealing with the same emotions. <laughs> and this chatty is why I love having Jonathan as, as a co-host, a founder of the show, but, but my co-host, and, and he, I love his droll English uh, humor. Yeah, um, that comes out. It, but is it not true, Shaggy? You? you know, to be able to be known. I think also that's one of the problems with um, with being a real estate agent is you know obviously you 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 do the training, you get the state um, um, certificate to allow you to become a real estate. You join a brokerage as a rookie, or you find a power team. But nobody really um, spells it out that you, you're, you're a business owner. You're, uh, nobody's going to go and get those clients. It, it is the day that you get that bit of paper that allows you to um, be a real estate agent. It's totally down to you. And they really, nobody explains that to them, really, do they? No, I think if uh, every uh, broker and manager really did their job, uh, there would be no need for the coaching industry. Right. That, that's a funny thing that you say, Chatty, because I can't agree with that more vocally or vociferously. You would think that there would be no space for you, Tom or Mike, because we're talking about one guy that does scripts, another guy that coaches you on 
on what to say once you've talked to somebody and, and what you do inside the listing appointments. And you think to yourself, well, shit, doesn't Keller Williams have 10 of you? And I already know what the answer is, by the way, and I'll, I'll save it for the audience. My experience has been with all the people that I've talked to. He's done 30,000 calls. I've done about five or 10,000. And you know what? The answer universally seems to be no, absolutely not. There isn't an individual. There's no videos. The videos that are being produced are being produced by other agents. Half of them are brokers trying to recruit you. So, so very few, very few resources worth anything anywhere that really teach you a high caliber of real estate sales skills. Actually, what do you think about that statement, Chad? Do you think I'm right? You think I'm wrong? No, I, I think uh, you're right for the most degree. And then, uh, you, you know, what I think uh, as well too, there's, there's something about you actually making a financial commitment. Like, you know, so, I mean, some companies, yeah, I mean, there's no one big guy that's doing, you know, all the big trainings for that one person, but they provide you, and I'm not going to mention any names at any companies, but there's a company out there right now, uh, you know, that, that gives you access to, I don't know, I mean, I logged in there and I saw like, I don't know, probably like 5,000 training videos and, you know, but it was a freaking damn puzzle. I don't know where to begin. I don't know how to navigate. I don't know where to go or any of that stuff. And I was like, you know, five minutes into it, I was like screw that i'd rather pay somebody five thousand dollars and just give me the meat that i want i don't want all the freaking damn baloney you know um so you know i'm, I'm not i'm you know I, I think a lot of companies mean well and they, they want best for for the people that they bring on uh it's just a matter of like do they have the right structure do they have the right format and uh i think a lot of people don't right uh, and I would agree with that. And it's, it's heartbreaking and shocking. And, and every now and again, when I'm having these wild, vivid fantasies in my head, I think to myself, I should just start a brokerage where you actually train your people right and train them how to like use digital leads and put an ISA company in, in the back end of the process so that my agents aren't chasing a hundred freaking phone calls down every day. Because I have those skills and I can do that. But it, it is a lot of work, but Jesus, it's shocking that no brokerage has done that as part of their process yet. Unbelievable. Well, yeah. I think we've discussed this before, but I'll put it to you. You know, um, obviously, um, I live in Northern Nova, Nevada. You know, I, I live in Carson City, and we're quite, quite close to Lake Tahoe, which is a, a very high price secondary home location for very wealthy um, Calif Californians and people from the Bay Area. And also there's another area called Truckee that's similar. Um, there's a lot of real estate um, agents in Northern Nevada and especially in Lake Tahoe. And there's about, there's about three national franchise and three regional brokerages that dominate, I would say dominate about 90% of the market. And basically they all hire between 200 to 450 agents. And most of those agents only sell between three and six houses a year. And really the brokerage only wants them to do that because the margin for the brokerage of that type of agent is actually much more profitable than a much more in industrious agent. So um, the lack of training, I think, is encouraged by that particular brokerage model. What do you, what do you say, Shadi, about that? Yeah, I, I, I can't really comment on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, um, see, that's where I say, you know, you know, it's, it's the intention of, of, of the brokerage. And, um, uh, if I identify somebody like that, I would not work for somebody like that. And, uh, does that exist somewhere in the country? I'm, I'm sure it does. And, um, I'm really not going to comment on that. No, no, you're, you're very wise to it. And I, you know, over to Robert. Go on, Robert. Have another question. No, I mean, hey, let's uh, let's uh, wrap up this uh, podcast yeah. on a high note. So, Chatty, this is my last and favorite question. You've got you've got one bullet in the gun, one piece of information to give somebody that you think is going to be more valuable. Like you, it's your top down 
like piece of information, the place like you've got somebody who's driven, you've got somebody who's focused. Mindset is not a problem. They, they, they just, they're looking for one piece of wisdom from a guy that has your kind of experience. What do you tell them? Uh, I'm going to tell them that, you know, the one thing that you need to spend the most amount of your time learning and studying is probably the one thing you've never heard anyone tell you, this is what you need to be learning and studying. And that is words, W-O-R-D-S. Because that is the constant in every single conversation, whether it's via text, email, or telephone, or a website, or whatever. And the words you choose to use are going to get someone to either say yes, maybe, or no. And I'm willing to bet that 99.9% .9 of the people, you know, watching this and or listening to this don't spend any time learning how to use the right words at the right time. Brilliant. I love it. Oh, oh yeah, I love it. Yeah. Jody, you have to come back at some stage over this year. Or hopefully you agree to come back sometime this year. It's been a, a blast. I really enjoyed the discussion. I, I agreed with almost everything you said. And you're very tactful as well, which I'm not. So you got everything. Um, we'll be back next week, like I say, either with uh, another great guest or another internal discussion with me and my great co-host, Robert. We'll be back next week, folks. Bye. Bye.